all systems are go. <laughs> all systems are go. <laughs> countdown helps me do things in the two minutes, you know, that we're having <coughs> like mad. You see, right. that's what the countdown's for. The countdown uh, is, 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 you know, it's like the choke on the car or uh, switching the TV off standby before the, the match comes on. You know, that that's that's what you're doing. I mean, what, in the opposite reverse. How much is for NASA or something like that? If, if they turn around and says, countdown is progressing. 10, and the thing fires off. And the, uh, 10, no, nine. no, but they, 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 they cancel all the time. They cancel all the know, time. They, they postpone when the countdown's going on. We, we can't do that because there's 13 people, 14, 27 people watching already. So you're, you're, you're firing the rug up before we got to zero. You know what I mean? That's I know that, that, but listen, it doesn't matter. Look, you're, you're going off. You're going off uh, sharper than you need to be, Justin. Not for the first time I've heard. Anyway. <laughs> Miss Jones, hello. Easy <laughs> McAllister says hello. Remember to comment, like, and share. If you're in any whiskey groups, share this to the whiskey groups. Hit share, two groups, hit now, and it goes. Do that for us. It helps us help you. Right. Um, uh, let me see. Everybody's saying hello. Williams McClanton saying hello. Patrick Mulkey saying hello. Julie Mason saying hello. Oh, you know, there you go. Uh, you know, uh, everybody's saying hello. Did, did I say hello to Trevor Watson? I did. There we go. Double you're, digits. You're over in the double digits. Uh, you're over in the old yellow submarine country that whole week. You... I was, I was, I was, I was in Beatles. I was in the uh, Walker Gal Gallery for Art of the Terraces, oh. which was fantastic. Uh, all about Art football art. Was that old, old football art, like Liverpool and Everton? No, not just Liverpool and Everton. All kinds of football, uh, you know, like that Royal the Rovers sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, it was actually quite good. And then was it both cathedrals as well? Oh, yeah. A few nice meals out, and obviously down the Albert Dock as well, and stuff like that. So excellent. Working. Me <laughs> down the docks working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what you uh, said. Uh, uh, well, they, just querying, just fun. I did, did, did see a, I did see a couple of black brass nails. Yeah. <laughs> Not I, personally, but I've seen no, them. No, yeah, 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 yeah. I've yeah. seen them. I, I understand. I understand. But no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> this show's even funnier than they think it is. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> I, 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 was work, I was working all week. Started back working hard craft, working working selling whiskey. Here, um, listen. I was yeah. at a tourism conference yesterday, right? With that our mutual friend, mutual friend Peter. No, it was a very good tourism conference. It was fantastic, all about Bangor Maritime Heritage. And I'm, I'm not joking. You, I looked up. And he near, near died off. One of the past mirrors of Bangor looks like Eric Sykes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to laugh. But anybody who doesn't know this, Bangor, Bangor's a little town outside uh, Belfast. And it was it was elevated to city status. So the town hall has now become Bangor City Hall. And it's... <laughs> if, if it, it was grand enough to begin with. It's, it was called Bangor Castle before that. And I don't know what the deal is with that there. I don't know what the deal is with that. It's a bit... Bit silly, bit silly. I personally think myself they should have just called it Bangor Castle, uh, you know, city headquarters or uh, Bangor. Bangor Castle City Hall. You know, it's Bangor Castle, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, Trevor, Trevor's asking, is that a short crust? Yes, this is a short crust. Um, I'm really finished this, so uh, I'll probably kill this tonight. Uh, rather tasty, it is too. It's quite nice. Um, yeah, it's very nice. So I'll just pour oh, myself. I didn't know that Tony, Tony Sillip was a scouser. <gasps> I think Tony's the did Tony tell me he's living in Wales? Is that right? He said he's 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 emigrated down into uh, uh sheepy sheepy country. So yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this off now tonight and uh yeah, quite nice as reason with it. Okay, okay. Well um very fresh, very fresh. Well it is what what I have to do, I have to hit a button here. I have cool. to hit a button. And I have to hit the button, and I have to remember what order I'm hitting the <coughs> button in. I've forgotten what order I'm hitting the button in, <laughs> or I've just realised that yeah. we have we have put them in order, and they're no longer in the order we put them in at all now. That's not What's good. that about? What is that about? <laughs> what is that uh... about? So th this is going to be pot lock tonight when I hit this button. All right. Right. Pot mm. lock. Here we go. Add image. Here we go. What's first of the news tonight, Marty? Is well, it this guy? It's this rather miserable looking chap. Yeah. Uh, this is an article that was in the, the Telegraph this week. 
uh, the, 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 the proper UK Telegraph. Um, and it was about this guy, Gary Pitchford, who's 68, and he invested £28,000 in buying nine casks of whiskey. Now, he looks, he's obviously been told to put on a bit of a, a sad, sad dish on him there, a sad face. Um, now, the casks ranged in price from 800 to 7,600 for, for the casks. And he bought it because he thought it was a tangible asset. You know, it's not like cryptocurrency or any of that kind of stuff. He, he bought it as a tangible asset, think it, based on what he was told, that it was going to make vast fortunes of money for him. Right? And I'm not saying it wasn't, but anyway. Now, the report goes through to highlight some of his concerns because he doesn't have any proof of ownership other than the company saying that he has proof of ownership. So there's a few things in it, in the article that says, look, it's unregulated, but there are uh, certain things. You, you, you need to have a receipt of distillery or re receipt of delivery. So if you flick over to the next one of the ones with the lines on it, I'll tell you what. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Fingers crossed this is it. Is that it? Uh, yeah, pull that up full screen. Now, you need something called a delivery order to ensure that the cask is transferred into your name at the warehouse. Okay, so this is Mark Littler. So if you go on to Mark Littler's um, he's a whiskey broker, so if you go on there, he tells you some of the stuff to be careful of and what not to look out for and all this kind of stuff. So the article's being a bit down on buying whiskey casks. However, if you go to the next page of text, there's a couple of things in the article that maybe it hasn't been as well researched as you think. Because one of the problems that this guy brings up is that he bought a cask of tomato, and so it says here he believed from the paperwork that he was buying casks of tomato Royal Brackler um, and Ardmore. Now Royal Brackler should be Royal Brackla. So they've obviously not done a huge amount of research there. Um, then it says that he was sold. Um, a bottle of Strathdurn, and which is a third of the value of Tomatin. Uh, the only thing the two have in common is that they are distilled at the same distillery. Now, okay, Tomatin don't sell you casks that you can then sell on as Tomatin. That's a separate agreement. Okay. So, so Strathdurn is their trading name for casks that come from their distillery. So the fact that they have turned around and said, oh, the only thing they have in common is that they are distilled at the same distillery. Yeah, it is, it is tomato. It's just you're not allowed to sell it as tomato. But anyone within the trade knows that Strathern is that distillery. So they, hold on. Is it legit or is it not legit? It is legit. That's how they sell them on. You can buy bottles of Strathdurn. There's been bottles, independent bottlers have sold it on. The way most of these casks make money, or how you make money for these set of buying them, is what you do is you buy the casks, they're aged, and then sold back to the industry. Okay. Right? That's primarily how these, these work. People have an idea they buy these casks, keep them for... 10 years or whatever and then you're going to bottle them yourself you're going to sell them on and make lots of money you need loads of different licenses to do that how these whiskey uh, investment companies work is they buy hundreds of barrels keep them for a few years age them and then sell them back to the trade that's primarily how they make their money so the whole article is it's very unbalanced yes the the investment companies make very wild and uh, big claims but they're always going to do that you know if you, if you go on to any 
investment company. They'll tell you we're going to make you money. Now, they all make grandiose claims, right? But yes. I listened to that uh, when I was on the plane to Liverpool, actually. I listened to that uh, article, uh, that podcast that Vic Cameron said to, to listen mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. And it said there are charlatans out there doing there this. And, and it doesn't actually ever exist. It doesn't really exist. And it's yeah. also, it's almost like a Ponzi scheme. They're selling the same barrel they don't, or or maybe the barrel. Doesn't uh-huh. exist at all. But, but listen, I, I listened to this article very carefully, and I, I thought, "Gosh, this is this is awfully BBC esque." It's dotted the T's, crossed the I's, all the rest of it. And you know what it said? What? It said you should open rare bottles to drink. And I thought, "Oh, if I was in the industry <laughs> and I wanted to make my bottles even rare, I would tell people <laughs> to open the bottles to drink them, making it more rare." And I thought. Why? You you need to qualify what you're saying. That's yeah. what they actually said. That's what they said in the thing. And, now, they, they didn't say it made the other things more rare. This is, oh, it's for drinking. Now, yeah. Yes, we know some of them are for drinking, but to tell people to open rare bottles that are worth a fortune, making them worth <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Well, all I will say is, if, you go, if you're thinking of doing this, do your research. Go on to uh, the, the legitimate companies, the companies that have been trading wine, trade in Castle Whiskey for a long time, okay? Um, Fly-by-night pop-up guys. Some of them could be 100%, but there are short ends out there. Same as everything else. But I just thought that article was a bit unbalanced. There's not. There's a guy who's saying, oh, I didn't like my experience, or I was thought I was being sold something. And about. He, he, I would say he didn't do his homework, and the people who wrote the article certainly didn't do their homework. Um, to turn around and say it's not tomato, and all these two things have in common is they're distilled at the same distillery. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a bit, I, but but you, you, you know that's almost like VW saying that uh, the the, the Sierra Beta wasn't the same car as the VW Polo when they were made in the same factory. <laughs> yeah, they've nothing in common except they're built by the same people, owned by the same people. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? And everybody, it's it's not even that it's. Uh, a a Seat Ibiza versus a, a Volkswagen Golf because there are differences between those two. Um, it's just that if it's, it's like taking a Volkswagen Golf and saying, "Well, we can't call it a Volkswagen Golf; you can only call it a, a people wagon, not 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 a Volkswagen." You know. So, uh, anyway, it's it's a bit, madness, madness. But what 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 a what a strange story to open with. What Ooh. a strange story to open with. I just I just I thought it was a bit odd. Next up, Middleton teasing everybody with a little video to show off their new box. Now, this is for the 2023 Middleton Very Rare, which will probably hit the shelves. Or sorry, what will probably happen is it'll hit the um, hit the back room of all, everybody that sells it to see how many of them's released. Um, it's going to come out probably next month. Um, now, it's, what it says is they are using 100% recyclable material. So they're not using wood anymore. Um, they're using a... It, it's made of paper, apparently, or a cardboard, something like that. And it uses 53% less fuel, 53% less greenhouse emissions, 30, 39% less water. I always thought wood was a fairly green thing to be using. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if you grow a tree and, and cut it, it biodegrades easy enough. Um, I, I, I don't know. I thought I thought I didn't know that wood <laughs> wood was ecologically unsound. Well, everybody's striving for it, you know. Good on them for trying, but uh, you know, I I don't think all these uh, carbon neutral things often take into account other factors. You know, like yeah, going to the, going to the supermarket to buy it and stuff like that, and all you know. Well, the night. IDL, Irish distillers, have said that by 2025, their secondary packaging will will be either recyclable, reusable, compostable, or removed completely. And with that in mind, they're going to be removing gift boxing, gift boxes for the PARS, the the uh, red spot, the spot range, and the Napo Castle. Um, okay, 
But lots of whiskey's bought as a present. And if you buy a bottle of whiskey to give it as a present for birthdays, Christmases, Valentine's Day, you're going to go and buy a box to put it in. Correct? Let me guess. Nicholas Sturgeon has become an advisor to them. <laughs> no, she needs, she needs another job. She needs another job. Um, no, um, you kind of have to get a, a box to put a present in. So are they not just passing this along? Mostly. Because uh, you're, if, if you buy it as a present and you just put about a wrapping paper around it, well, yeah. So you're going to be, people are going to just go and buy another box to put it in. And that would be great on the secondary market. You'll be able to put the box in eBay and get a fortune for it. Yeah, oh my god, you get a box that fits for your for your <laughs> red spot. Yeah, but they're going to do away with the tubes. They're going to do away with all that. Um, so, uh, Tony Sell says, do they replace three trees trying to replace ones and cut down? A lot of places do. A lot of places yeah. do do that. Well, they claim they do. They claim they do. There's been a bit of scandal about that over the, over the years, about people saying they're replanting three trees and it doesn't really work out the way they sort of... They, they, mm -hmm. Most of this stuff, they, they sort of try and sell people a bit of a pup. But yeah, I, again, I, 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 I just think if you're going to, you're going to make high-end stuff... That people buy primarily for gifts. No, well, certainly a lot, a, a huge percentage of people buy them as gifts. They're going to go and buy a box to put it in. So you're only passing the box down the line a little bit, you know. There you go. Uh, uh, Russ Bishop saying hello tonight. Uh, we're we're quarter way through the show tonight. Remember to comment, like, and share. We're live on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitch, Telegram, uh, D Live after the hour, uh, Twitter as well, and. A couple of new platforms which we're working on, which is trying to get it on uh, Instagram and TikTok again. But that's proven very, very, very. Get on, the, the Chinese government will take us out if you go. If, oh, don't be getting on TikTok. Oh no! I want. I want to go on TikTok so as we get the Nine Rivers Distillery crowd. No, 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 no. They, they watch all the time. It's so they do. Steve, I, I know. Steve I know, I know they do. I know they do. But the, the, mm. maybe they're maybe they're uh, the punters in China can't watch some of these channels. Um, but always say hello, and if you like what we do, you know, it's, uh, well, uh, buy us a coffee, uh, Irish whiskey. There you go, uh, as well. Right. Uh, and we're on Linktree as well. Linktree is the one to go to to find as well. I'll maybe put the the the, the, Q, the QR code on screen uh, uh, tonight, maybe at some point, so as you can all find us. And actually, I'll maybe replace it with that Irish whiskey review logo there, so it makes people scan it. Marty, would that make sense? I, 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 you just do what you need to do, Justin. Well, well you see, it, it already says Irish whiskey review above my head or above your head or below my bum or something like that. It says it. It says it. It says it. it, says it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Versace way fronts. <laughs> um, I, oh, you have them on too, and all. <laughs> uh, I, I, know, I see. I see Peter. Um, is is saying here is uh, some kind friends. Peter, I I I saw something on a, a Facebook um, that you had a, a, a passing in the family. So my deepest condolences, mate. Um, um, I hope you hope um, everything goes okay for you. I know. It's, I know it's oh, I didn't. I didn't see that. that. I didn't see it. You can tell me later. Uh, Tony Sillett is saying, "What you drinking tonight, Murray? I maybe I missed it. Uh, no, no, oh. you, you, you did I'm, say." I'm, I'm, I'm bottle killing this. I'm bottle killing the, the short mm -hmm. cross uh, Ryan malt mm -hmm. uh, whiskey. Um, this this has sort of changed as it's went down. It's got a lot fresher in the glass uh, now that it's down at the bottom. It's a lot of, it's very very sort of fresh, and summery, and pretty. Do you, do you want to know what I ha had uh, during the week in, in Liverpool? I had a gentleman Jack one night, which was pleasant enough. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a Keola. Is that I'm saying it wrong, Emma? A Keola. Is that not the diluting stuff? The Keora? No, that's Keola. With Keola. a very racist advert. Co Koala. Oh, I don't know. Kalila. 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 Okay. It wasn't too bad either. Uh, and I had a Maker's Mark as well, actually. Mm. So it was pretty, pretty reasonable choices, you know? I, 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 you I had a bit of weird sort of sleeping all week. I think it's still a bit of bloody jet lag. Being waking up in the middle of the night going, hello, waking up. I'm trying to get back to sleep and just not being able to do it. So I've been a bit out of sorts for the last few right. days. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, back to the routine, back to normal. Okay. 
Uh, Next up. Have you got you've got a green bag, do you? I bet you have a green bag and walk around Glen Arm so that, that the Earl of Antrim can see that you shop at the same places that he shops at. Look at this here. Look at this. You know. Um <laughs> we're going to we're going to London and to Harrods, and surprise, surprise, it's going to be McAllen and Harrods. Yeah, McAllen have done um, their, their 007 bottlings to celebrate six decades of, of James Bond running around shagging all over the place and shooting people. Um, they have come up... What? That's all, that's what he does. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He protects the realm. Oh, you're right. Okay. You, so he you, does, you, doesn't you, run you, around you, shagging anybody or anything like that. I don't know. I haven't watched it in years because it's shit now. But anyway. Oh, no. That, that, like, that, Daniel Craig's all right. Um, now, in London, if you go, they've come up with a interactive experience. Now, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but they have some artifacts there. So they have little Nelly from uh, You Only Live Twice. You know the thing that Sean Connery the helicopter? <laughs> uh, right. I-, I thought these were the artist's impressions of the, th- the things you had to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. it might be. It's an interactive experience. So I'm going to say okay. there's something to do. They're, go- they're going to spend money at it, let's be honest. Okay. They're going to spend a bit of dough at it. Um, so, yeah, little Nelly from You Only Live Twice is there. Uh, yeah. The Odd Jobs hat. No Odd Job. The- yeah. Don't never sure whether it's Chinese or Japanese or Joe, but he he's got the 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 hat. He, he fires that. So there's little Nelly, uh, Sean Connery, um, and there's Ojo. Um, they've got a, a gold bar signed by uh, Sean Connery. Um, Jaws teeth, you know Jaws from uh, biting the cable and all. They've got his right. teeth. He's has he's there too. So. What they also, if you see the drone here with the six bottles in the case, apparently you can buy a limited edition case with six bottles in it. Yeah, wow. Now, I'm going to say that's going to be quite pricey, but it'll be, it'll be highly, highly collectible. But if you're into James Bond, you find yourself in London, I think it starts tomorrow. So get yourself down to Harrods and, and have a wonder about okay, right. Very you don't, good. Very good. You don't have to buy the stuff. So just go down and make cost some money. I don't know. Uh, no, I, usually usually Harrods when you, you you go to a thing that gets to get people through the door. It's it's a it's it's a visitor thing. They don't normally charge yeah, you for it. Not I normally. I don't think so. But put it like this: if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you're interested and find yourself over there, take yourself down and have a wee nosy because it might be worth I, it. And if if you do, take some photos and tell us what it's like. I, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Muhammad Al Fad doesn't own it anymore. Sure, he doesn't. I don't think he does. No, no don't. He sold it. but I, I was in there once when he was there, and we did tell you, what did he tell you? A lovely man, lovely yeah. man. Uh, you know, he came down the escalator, for, you know, like you know, like Mister Grace Brothers, and the old dears were all over him, and he was as as nice as pie, and like like, uh, you know, you you can't do yeah. that every day when you go into work, but he he appeared to do it. You know well, what I mean? I was in Horrid's a few years ago, and he he owned it. And I, I, I hate shopping, so I was walking around, and I ended up in the the, the, the dining room table department or something. It was all like seventy thousand pound tables, and I was like, "Fuck this!" I says, "Right, I'm going for a beer because there's like three pubs on it. You know, there's it's mm-hmm. massive." So I went down uh, and having a bar, decided I had to go to the, the 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 gentleman's room. So I was heading over to use the laboratory. And there's a guy there who collects, he was collecting money to go in. And that was all right. Um, you get, have to pay a pound or something to get the toilet, whatever it was anyway. So three hundred quid. Went and came back out again. And just briefly chatting to him, chatting to him for a few minutes. And he he said the same. He said, Mohammed, he says, the boss man comes around here regularly, stops and chats with everybody. He's a lovely guy, really, really nice guy. So... Well, great stuff. Hey, listen, Tony Shelt was saying next time in liver try, try Yates Original White, then a pint of something you like in Yates Wine Lodge. Right, I'll keep it out. Well, I was in the Philharmonic. It was in the Philharmonic mm. for lunch. It was actually quite good. It's a chain, Nicholson's. It's very good. Uh, yeah, it's when it was between. Great one, listed toilets as well. So the wee boys really. didn't take a picture in the toilet. So I was going to, but I didn't. I haven't <laughs> uploaded the picture. That's the first. Go, That's the first. Normally, we get that much. Uh, get that much on tonight. Uh, and then I was also in uh, the Ship and Mitre, 
which is excellent for uh, Germanic beers and reels. I have photographs. I will. Uh, when you were when you're talking about something else, I'll upload one of these. And I was also in the Land Tavern, which I neglected to take a picture of because it was in a rush. I was actually writing condolence cards of all things as well myself. But anyway, that's another story. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the best lose in Liverpool. Yes, there were well, an ornate well, lose. Like it, the Titanic lose were pretty ornate. The original Titanic lose uh, in in Harlem Wolf in uh, the the headquarters were pretty pretty pretty. Aye, they were loved. Aye, yeah. aye, I suppose it's tidy enough. And I, I love the way this is a whiskey show. We're talking about very highly decorated lab, lab, laboratories all over the, the British Isles. Oh yes, I know. I know. Well, we can't say crappers to... because we'll get switched <laughs> off, even though Sir Thomas Crapper invented them. You know. Uh, no, well. I, I've been in the filler morning. Uh, the Philly. Uh, it's a nice, nice place it is. Nice place it is. Very good. I was nice. in a few pl other places. It was down the pump house as well, down at Albert Quay. It was good too. But anyway. Uh, but anyway. Did, it get, did Liverpool get its world heritage status back again? Did it? Or did uh, it lose it? I actually lost it. I think, I think they did lose it. I think hmm. they did lose it. I don't know why, because it's a happening place. Bowl Street was vibrant. But the, Euro, the, the Eurovision's coming to Liverpool, you know. Oh yeah, yeah but, uh, Liverpool's a really good side to go out and there's been yeah. loads of really good places in Liverpool. Anyway, yeah. we're we're digressing, we're digressing. Um, yeah, we need to keep showing the road up. I think uh, if Liverpool, if Liverpool one shopping centre want to sponsor us and do whiskey tastings, we're available. We're available. The Hilton's fine. <laughs> no problem. Um, uh, there's a couple of questions there, Marty. Have you ever tried St Patrick's cask strength? If so, what do you think? I've never tried it, so I have no, um, I, I have no opinion on it. But I know it's sourced whiskey. I think, as far as I know, it's GND. Um, I've never tried it. That isn't the one that was up Brock Shane way that you know. No, no that's no. see, that's I, I have a, I have about three bottles of Saint, the original St Patrick's, which was never actually technically released. It was Cooley, and it was a guy who owns the Slimish Spring. Just outside Brashean, and he 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 bought whiskey from Cooley and bottled it and put in some water from the Slemish Spring to to, mm -hmm. to water it down, and uh, he never actually sold it. So I have about three bottles of it that he gifted to me. I didn't pay any money for them, therefore don't need the UK tax stamp. But no, he uh, yeah, I have a couple of bottles of that, but that's a totally different thing. But. In short, no, I haven't. I haven't. Okay, Ben Eaton's looking for uh, recommendations. We're halfway through the show tonight. We might as oh, well no. do them before we do the next article. Any recommendations on to look out for an auction or in the shops? <laughs> ben, you've preempted me because I was going to mention something. Um, auction sites. This is the Heritage Hunter of. Um, hang on, that light. That light's not doing me any favors here. Hang on. Heritage. Oh, it's Hunter. pretty good tonight. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, thirty pound. I paid for that at an auction. Um, when you go into the auctions, go towards the end of it and go to the bottom end of it, and you pick up some real bargains. I have in the last little while picked up. I've, I've decided I'm not spending any money. Remember, I said that's an end of end up buying about thirty bottles. But anyway, you can end up picking up bottles of. Some other stuff like cognac from the 1980s, or a I have a bottle of Benedictine from like the 1990s that I picked up for like 15 pounds. And although they're not whiskies, there are some whiskies that have had bargains half the price of retail, half the price of retail. Um, you can pick up these other stuff, and what you're doing there is you're using them as sort of comparisons to whiskey. What's the difference? Has cognac changed? Um, is it more full body back then and so on and so forth because everything has changed all the production or you know, how things are produced and all that so look for stuff at the bottom end of the, the auctions because there's loads of bargains to be had loads of them so yeah my top tap top tap guys lovely stuff lovely yeah. stuff uh remember we're on youtube facebook linkedin telegram twitch d live Soon to be TikTok and Instagram as well, live as well. Uh, Twitter as well, I think it goes out on. I always say hello. This is the live show. It's 10 p.m. Saturday night, uh, GMT. And uh, 
Yeah, a couple of good uh, good exclusives coming up soon as well to watch no, out for. A couple of new things for, for in the pipeline, so um, stay stay tuned. And don't forget to hit the subscribe on YouTube. That's a key point in the whole thing. Um, yeah. And the bell. And the bell. Oh, and, hit, hit, and, and the bell. <laughs> Russ Bishop, speaking of McCall, I snagged myself a bottle of A Night on Earth for my birthday. Uh, did you open it? What did it taste like, Russ? I want to say you didn't open it. I was to guess, Russ. Because <laughs> nobody opens McAllen these days. I opened this and it's not very good. And I wish the hell I hadn't bothered my arse. <laughs> this is about seven hundred pound a bottle now, but I did sell plenty of them. But uh, yeah, <laughs> what about that? Uh, Thatch and Brooke Shane did it do a whiskey at one point? It did. Yes, the Podrine Mayor. It did a, a, a bottle that they got from Cooley, and then uh, Beam Suntory uh, Suntory bought over Cooley and just cut it. Knocked it in the head. Yeah. Here, there's oh. Ross saying he did it. He did open it. He did open it. <laughs> Good man, Ross. Good man. Now we salute you. Rich. There you go. Very well. Uh, we've got a couple <laughs> of more stories to go through we before we get to the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the, the, how whiskey saves the day. Um, yes. There's a couple of um, adverts, and they're both, they're both Irish distillers, but uh, there's one I think is quite good and quite funny. And then one of them, well, I'll let you be the judge of it. Uh, remember we said about Powers doing the 100% rye? Uh, it, 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 they've done a thing called Bye Bye American Rye. It's a, a poster, and they've put them up in the States. Uh, we'll go, the, here's our Irish cousin. Uh, so I thought, I think that's pre pretty cool. Bye Bye American Rye. That's it is, it is, it is, yeah. yeah they've put these up is. as posters. On, there's, there's, if you look, if you Google it, there's a few of them, and it looks it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. It does. Oh, yeah, the big ones outside as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have. Um, they do. There we go. Right, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I, I, think that's, I think that's reasonably witty and funny. There's another one, um, an actress called Regina Hall. Don't, don't know who she is. Um, I think she it, looks like this. That's her. She looks very surprised there, you know, um, <laughs> as if she just found out she's in an advert. And this is for Jameson. And, and well, you can watch it, and uh, it's billed as being hilariously funny. I'll, I'll let you watch it, and then you can tell me how much you think the humour is involved. Is it beach balling? It's beach balling. Uh, uh... It's beach balling. What's it doing? Push your internet up. My internet's right up high, but it is beach balling. It is beach balling. But uh, we'll see if it starts. I don't think it's going to start on us, Marty. I, well, I think that's going to. Put like this. I think that's going to beach ball all, all night there. Put the link up, and then people can watch it for themselves. Yeah, um, I will. It's called desk decoys. Um. And basically what it is, it's supposedly in preparation for St. Patrick's Day that because people have, have had to go back into the office, you put a cardboard cutout up and then go drinking for the day. Now, if you're at work and a cardboard cutout is a good stand-in, I'm going to say you'll, <laughs> there's probably your employment prospects aren't that good. <laughs> um, it's 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 just it's, I don't know. Have things become they're so bad humor wise that this is what's been labeled as being funny? Because it's not funny in the slightest. You know, it's just sort of crap. You know. Okay, so she's actually is a cardboard cutout. And that is that what you're saying? Then yes, basically. I'm not a hundred percent sure, Justin, because I'm going to say it's... she's had, she's had a bit of. You know yeah. that, yeah. Airbrushing, airbrushing. No, I'm going to say there's a bit of uh, the old plastic surgery and a bit of airbrushing and stuff being done. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. If you look, if you watch the advert, it's I don't know. Maybe maybe people do find it funny. I just don't particularly. But anyway. All right. All right. Well, All right. I'm having extreme difficulties tonight, but uh, I can't get it to do it. <laughs> so, 
I should it's done it. Me. It's done it. We've we've filled, we've padded, and we'll be able to play the goddamn thing. We we have filled and padded, and we have managed to do it. I don't know how I, I managed to do this. Every I time. don't know. You're, oh, you're awesome. God, you're awesome. I, I, I know I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I know. I know. That's the secret secret of my success. Right. So we just have to pad because it's only at thirty two percent now. It's at fifty three percent. It's at eighty three percent. And here it's ready to go. Hit it. Here we go. Hit it. <laughs> so we have play. Well, here we are. Somehow they got us back into the office. Yay! Regina. 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 If they've got you working this St. Patrick's Day on a Friday, no less, you need a plan. That's why Jameson has created SPTO, St. Patrick's Day Time Off. It's where PTO meets the greatest social holiday of the year. And to make sure that we can pull it off, they have created the Jameson Desk Decoy. Have a great day at the office. Bye! So full of life. What about this script? I know, right? Woo! Regina, you shouldn't have. It's the totally legit way to enjoy your SBTO guilt-free this year. Hey, around the Jameson for my friend. Hello? Excuse me? He gets it. Ah, I know how to do that. That, that, that. That's a thing. That's a joke because people are working at home, right? And have thing what's called the mouse mover. So it, it nudges the mouse like you're at home on the computer. So the boss mm -hmm. thinks you're actually working on documents at home because it sees uh, active. And, all right. So, uh, that, so yeah. all right. So it's dead funny then. Because it keep uh, if you if well, you it's a bit this, funny, but it's not very. It's not very. Not, if, not very if you funny. Google this, it's spelled as being hilarious. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think it's right for me. If I'm totally honest. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, Rush Bishop says there was a far better ad back in the day. Watch that link. We'll watch that link. We'll watch that later on. Rush, click it later at your peril. <laughs> no, you're not responsible for the content which Russ provides. <laughs> Oh uh, boy, I can't, can't. there uh, you go. That's that's good. That's good. There you go. <laughs> now, bit of, news, bit of news from work. Um, the friend at hand has uh, their own bottle. Everybody, anyone who knows, the friend at hand has their own uh, whiskey range. They brought out the last one. It's a 14 year old uh, Bushmill single malt finished in an Amarone. Italian wine cask. Uh, it's called the Journey's End, and this marks the the, the the end, the 14 bottles all the way through, which I know some people have been collecting. Um, so it, the friend at hand has all of these different uh, bottlings. They're all differently named. A lot of them are the same whiskey. It's just that the, the, the labelling and stuff's different. But some of them are, are finished in certain wine casks. Uh, one of them's cask strength, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's just that this is now the end of the friend of hand own bottlings as they are in that collection. So that's it finished. Fourteen. Now one of oh, by the way, one of them's an empty bottle with a feather in it, um, which he sells for a tenner <laughs> because that was during he brought it out during COVID because well nobody was doing bugger all. So yeah, um, these are these are they are. Very interesting in, the, in and of themselves. One is a very good whiskey. It's a Bushmill single malt, 13 year old, bottled at 46% and higher, and finished really well. And it's the only whiskey in the world that says distilled and bottled in Northern Ireland. So, so yeah, I'm going to have myself. Okay. Oh, I will. I'll have a wee one of these. We had one, we had one more to come up. We had a thing about Dispensary the Alchemist as well, didn't yes. we? Miss it out? Yeah. No, we didn't because that's the last thing. See, Justin. All right. Don't need, don't need, it's all under control, Justin. Can all right. I? Every week there's a, there's yeah, a slide okay. left over, and I think that could have been <laughs> the one that hit the million, <laughs> the million subscribers on YouTube. No. So if you want to, to get a nice collection of stuff to set up, myself, the friend at hand, you can only buy it in the shops, so you have to go there. But yeah, uh, that's it finished now. That's it finished. Uh, next, okay. the last thing, the last thing, because this has taken a lot, a lot longer than we thought it was going to. Um, the it last has. thing is there's a bar in Glasgow called The Alchemist. Now, I've never been in it. It's just off George Square. Um, but they have what they call a revolutionary and unique whiskey. It says whiskey dispenser. The dispensary, if you scroll down a little bit on the page there, Justin, it comes up with 
Um, the whiskey experience, drinking with the dispensary, okay? Uh, now, it's a unique build, add a unique thing. What you do is you go up and order the drink at the bar and you get given a token and then you go down to a vending machine, put your token in, hit a button and it dispenses your drink. And they're all cocktails and it's spelled as being unique. Is that not just a, a vending machine? I don't know what. It looks pretty cool. I'm sorry we didn't go you, the last you, time. You would love that. I, Personally, I I'm, I'm not 100% even... sure what the fuck it's supposed to be. I think it's fantastic. I tell you what, I'm going to digitally check the size and shape of those, uh, uh, what do you call it, those uh, tokens. Flowers. Yeah, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna mill them, digitally print them, and then I'm gonna do that. And then when I, when I drink when I drink my uh, when I drink my uh, cocktail, maybe the steam will come out of me, just like carry on screaming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I think it just looks like a, just it just looks like a vending oh, machine. Kill myself. Myself from, it's DDT or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. oh, I don't know. I don't oh. know. But no, that's that's basically the news. That's all the stuff I've. Uh, <laughs> that's all the stuff I've done this week. There we go. People criticise you just the old coin. To the weight yeah. of the coin. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Ah. Oh, no. Now, uh, what's that? Sean McLean, what's he say there? It's just, it's just, I, I don't like that idea. I just went to a Japanese restaurant here and the waitresses are like the Stepford Wives robots. I kind of like that. Are you? Are you? No, I would, I would mind a robot waitress. A waitress, waitress. That'd be all right. I'd, I'd do all right with them. So, listen, we've got 20 minutes left right, tonight. We better, better do this because it's really good because I feel like yeah. the theme of Kelly's Hero should play. Well, right. This, this is it's a bit of a step away. Um, as anyone who knows, watches the show knows, I like all the sort of weird and odd things about whiskey. Um, not just always the drinking it. And I think that there's, a, there's a, a, a different element to whiskey and certainly in terms of history and, and all of that and sense of place and all that kind of stuff uh, that you don't get with any other drink. Now, Prohibition back in the States had a huge impact on whiskey all over the world. We all know that um, and it's, it's talked about quite a lot. But one of the things that recently happened during the pandemic now, I don't think the distilleries, certainly in, in Northern Ireland, and, and I assume uh, down uh, in the Republic and so on, a lot of them didn't get the credit they deserved when they switched over to start to make hand sanitizer. And a lot of people turn around and say, oh, that was them trying to make money at the thing. That was no easy task. That took, a, that took a change in the law to allow them to do that. But they stepped up and they started producing hand sanitizer when the NHS was trying to buy this stuff and supply and demand. They're getting it from uh, foreign nations. The price of it went through the roof. And especially the likes of Eklundville, um, the, the, the Boatyard, Boatyard, Boatyard uh, Cologne, uh, all of these guys produced it in su to, to such a high volume that they'd actually dropped the price of it significantly within a couple of weeks. And they didn't get the credit they deserved for it. But... It's not the first time distilleries have stepped up to the mark when it's been called for. Now, Prohibition ended on the 5th of December 1933, okay? Um, ridiculous experiment came about, but it totally affected whiskey all across the globe. And to this day, the Irish whiskey industry is still feeling the effects of, uh, of Prohibition. States. Now, during Prohibition, we said it before, there were distilleries that were actually running to produce whiskey for medicinal purposes. Now, one guy was a bit of, uh, of a visionary. You can change the, the graphic here at some point, Justin. No, that, right, that's the other way. That's the one. So, Prohibition ends at last, right? 
Uh, then there was a guy who, in many ways, was a bit of a visionary, and his, his name was Lewis uh, Rosenthal. And as a, now, if you read his biography, he's a very interesting character, very interesting character, um, but we'll get to that in a wee minute. And he started to buy up um, um, whiskey and whiskey distilleries. Now, it says that he officially made his fortune after bootlegging or after Prohibition ended, but he was a bootlegger. He was making money. But as loads of guys did. So, like, for example, <laughs> J JFK's dad, that's how he made all his money. He was a bootlegger. Now, uh, he, he learned his trade at the uh, his, his uncle's distillery in, in Kentucky. Now, legend has it that he was in the south of France when he bumped into Winston Churchill. And Churchill told him that Prohibition wasn't going to end, that they were, uh, or it wasn't going to last too long, it was going to end. And so Rosenthal bought up distilleries and started to stockpile whiskey. Okay. Now he got his money from Lehman Brothers. So that he was a he wasn't a businessman really to start with. <laughs> but let, let's just say uh, his fourth wife, Susan Kaufman, testified under oath that Lewis just Lewis used to hold parties way back in the day before she married him, at which he used to bring and this is her quote, boy prostitutes. And he used to invite the great and the good to these parties. Uh, government officials, bankers, members of the underworld and all attended. And by some miracle, he was able to borrow money from Lehman Brothers and he was able to buy off the stuff. Hmm, can I figure out what actually went on there? No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> well, all I'm saying, I'm not, let's just say, but he's a very interesting character. We might, we might actually do a wee show on him someday because he's, he's well worth thinking. But anyway, now, after the end of Prohibition, lots of distilleries started to open up. And as we all know, in America, they don't have the same aging laws and technical file at the back in the day. But in order to... In order to make whiskey taste good, uh, normally is aged for a certain period of time. So if you just start up in 1933, you'll get permission. By the time you build your distillery and start to actually get it commissioned and all of that, you're only really beginning to find your feet a few years later. Um, it was only really after 1935 that a lot of the distilleries got up and running. Now, by that stage, scotch was being imported. Um, and in the build-up to uh, World War II, scotch was being imported, uh, being exported from the UK to raise money and taxes and so on, and being sold to fill that void and gap between whiskey being uh, produced in the States and being drinkable and palatable. So... Uh, Rosenthal was importing jewels. That's what he was doing, and made a fortune of money from that. But he set up his own company called Shenley. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is a bottle of Shenley from the 1940s. Okay. At this stage, he had bought up a few distilleries, quite a lot, and was one of the big um, whiskey brands, uh, if you like, in in the US. Now, as war was... It's quite a catchy name for, for a bottle, and it looks a nice bottle too. Yeah, well, it, it, it does. But as war loomed, um, they began to realise that, that war was probably inevitable. Now, Shenley approached the, the US government and said, we can offer some services here. We can do we can do some stuff. And what we can do is we can start to produce industrial alcohol. It's really what was happening. Now the American government said we don't need it. We we can produce our own. Uh, we have all we need. Uh, we can buy it from other sources. There's other industrial alcohol plants. For anyone who's not sure, to produce industrial alcohol is really, really difficult. You can't just do it on a on an ordinary still. Because no matter how many times you distill it, there's an equation called the VLE equation. So alcohols sort of pulls 
water with it. It's okay. almost, it's almost yeah. impossible yeah. to make 100% pure. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, anyway, so anyway, Pearl Harbor happens, okay? Uh, there's, there's a picture of an exploding plane there somewhere. Um, Pearl Harbor happens and you, you have the America join in the war, okay? Now, Rosenthal and others had already begun, even though the American government told them that they didn't need it. They had already started to prepare for it because they kind of thought this was going to happen. And they did it voluntarily. But uh, someone as shrewd as, as Lewis Rosenthal was still looking to make a profit. Uh, you know, war profiteering, but he's still looking to, to make uh, a profit. So they designed the stills, they reconfigured the stills so that they could produce industrial alcohol, which is over 95% ABV, so 190 uh, proof and above. Now, prior to this, al industrial alcohol was being produced using molasses from, from Cuba and the Caribbean. Now, in the early 1940s, uh, distillery leaders had approached the National Defence Advisory Commission and offered it, but they offered uh, personnel, equipment, storage and alcohol. But they were told that none of this was needed and all of the needs would be met by uh, the, the War Production Board would take care of this. Now, the distillers pressed the issue, um, but this then provoked the, the prohibitionists, who, although prohibition had disappeared, they hadn't gone away, you know. You know, they were still there. Okay, yeah. And the prohibitionists tried to get a bill passed at the Senate, um, they tried to get several of them passed, but one of them is called the May Bill. Um, it was to prohibit prostitution within uh, in close proximity to military bases. And what they wanted to do was tag on uh, liquor sales onto that as well, which would have meant that anywhere near a military base, there would have been a, an area around a military base that you couldn't buy um, prostitution and liquor. And the prostitution, even though it's illegal in many states in the US, in all states in the US, as far as I'm aware, pretty much, um, that this would be enforced by the military. But it failed, okay, thankfully. Now, Rosenthal went to the government and submitted a nine-point plan. He actually went to FDR. He went to the president. And in October, uh, he had a lot of meetings with him. And they got a contract to produce 50 million gallons of industrial alcohol. That was okay. What was going to happen was the Commodity Credit Corporation bought the grain for free and basically gave it to the distilleries to produce the 50 million gallons. Okay, yeah, that was great help, yeah. Yeah, great help. In 1942, the American government accepted the, the distillery's proposal and a full conversion took place to produce, instead of palatable drinking alcohol, to industrial alcohol. Now, every distillery had at least two army inspectors in place to make sure that this was what was happening. Now, the alcohol was being in, used initially to make plastics, textiles, protective coatings, uh, some medicines and food. But what happened was the Japanese captured 90% of the natural rubber plantations in, in the Pacific. That meant natural rubber wasn't coming to the US. And it, before the entry to the Second World War, the US Army was needing 250,000 tons of rubber. Once they entered the war, that tripled and they needed 750,000 tons of rubber when the Japanese have now captured 90% of the production. Okay. You see, there's an issue here. But there what is. They, what they were able to do was take the industrial alcohol that was being produced at the distilleries and turn it into what was called Buna S, a synthetic, it? a synthetic rubber. That's what filled the gap. The distilleries filled the gap to produce rubber. Now, three they could make from a gallon of whiskey, from, from, sorry, from a gallon of alcohol, they were able to make three pounds of synthetic rubber. And that's what was used to make tires. It was used to make all manner of products. Um, and between 1941 and 1945, the, the US government used 650 million gallons of rubber. Gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> Isn't it? 
Um, now, now, the US also shipped 100 million gallons of industrial alcohol that was made at the distilleries to the USSR. Now, from it, they made rubber. They also made antifreeze to help, um, obviously, in the winter to move the tanks and so on and so forth. Um, the alcohol was also used in producing the smokeless powder that was used for, for ammunition. Uh, a barrel of alcohol was enough to produce enough powder to fire one 12-inch 12 12 shell. Now, the distilleries were working 24-7, seven days a week. Um, and as men were being conscripted and enlisting in the army, women then came in to fill the gap. And that was where women came in to uh, and it is the distilleries during the Second World War. Now, the Shenley Distillery Company did something of, of real note. And, OK, Lewis Rosenthal is a bit of a controversial figure. But uh, the guys who worked for the company who were serving in the military were considered to be on military leave from the company and continued to get paid. That's good. Yeah. So they would have been getting their military money, the Shenley money, and a lot of the time their wives were then coming into work. They had no need to be doing any of this, but they did. And again, we need the credit where it's due. So their families all continued to get paid. Now, in 1943, the distillery had met the government needs and were then allowed to actually make some drinkable stuff as well. Uh, there were a few conditions. The barrel size was then it was increased to be in the 53 gallon or 240 litres that we get today. We That's a standard sort of bourbon size, this is 240 litres. Uh, the hoops were were dropped from eight down to six to save um, to, to save in steel. And the bottle size was changed from a quart to four fifths of a quart. So basically to, to 1.136 litre bottles. That's why today you still have the 70, uh, 75 CL bottles, not 70. That you get. But remember we talked about that changing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So totally transforming, in many ways, transforming the industry. Now, in 1943, the Shenley chemists discovered that some of their processes down in their wash packs or, or fermenters uh, could be used to produce penicillin. Now, penicillin wasn't that long discovered before the first or before the Second World War. Now, in that year, production of the antibiotic was the second biggest priority of the War Department after the Manhattan Project to produce penicillin. Penicillin, yes. Uh, now, in 1942, this is give you an example. 1942, March the 14th, the US made penicillin was used for the first to treat a pre, uh, patient with septicemia. So this is 1942. Mm -hmm. That one treatment used up 50% of all the penicillin in the US. That's, mm -hmm. Right? Skip forward to June the 6th, 1944, D-Day. 73,000 GIs arrived uh, in Normandy. And with them, they took 23 million doses that had been produced at distilleries. Not all of it produced at distilleries, but certainly a significant amount of it. After the war, Ernest Fleming, uh, Alexander Fleming, Ernest Chain, and Sir Howard Florey were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology. The penicillin, penicillin was given the nickname the miracle drug in the Second World War. To give you an idea of just how important that was, the photo there is a photo of the, the, the trenches in the First World War. During World War I, there was 10 million soldiers died. Half of them died from the bombs and the bullets. The other half died from infection. If they had penicillin, probably most of those could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. um, World War II, the most deadly conflict in history, took the lives of 60 to 80 million. Uh, if you include the Holocaust, that's 21. Uh, the military deaths, uh, it's 21 to 25 million military died. Penicillin saved so many of them. Can you imagine the devastation if twice as many of those had died? You know, 40, 50 million military personnel died. Now, there's some of the distilleries were profiteering, we think we're profiteering from the war effort. 
uh, because they, they were doing this, but still getting paid. But from October 1942 to 1945, the distilleries didn't make any drinking, drinking whiskey, really. But they still paid tax on the stuff that they had in their warehouse. Alcohol producers paid $6 billion in tax uh, on what they were selling from their warehouses. Now, Shenley, as an aside, after the war, uh, wanted to help their uh, serving employees, people from the military, coming back again. And their new employer, uh, and their new employees as well, sorry. They adopted the uh, Employees Retirement and Benefit Plan, which provided a retirement package, life insurance, medical care, benefits, and paid 50% of tuition fees for veterans and offered uh, free loans and opened a credit union for their employees. So, yeah, um, when you talk about what people did during the war, think of the amount of lives that were saved, the, the war effort from munitions to the rubber on the, 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 the tires on the jeeps, and all of that, a lot of that came from the distilleries. I don't think these people get the credit they deserve, but like a little bit like the hand sanitizer and stuff. Uh, Very good. So uh, uh, everything's linked, and you wouldn't we wouldn't know it up. Now, I th I thought I thought that I'm pretty sure it was Alexander Fleming uh, was was uh, <coughs> penicillin, and I thought uh, Banting, who is Canadian, was insulin. Tony. So uh, I may be wrong, mm -hmm. may be wrong, may be wrong. But uh, there you go. Uh, got but like this, there's a he book. was insulin. Uh, what's the name? What's the name of the book? There's a book. It's called Sunday's Coat. And it's basically how they got pen. They didn't want penicillin falling into the hands of the Germans. Um, and it's how they got it from uh, the UK after Alexander Fleming invented it. Alexander Fleming was from Edinburgh, and they would <clears> go <throat> across. Um, it uh, yeah. Well, my grand my grandfather was uh, who's only gone uh, a few years now, several years now. He was. He, instructed by the captain of the ship to go and meet the train from London mm -hmm. one night in the middle of the war. And this guy, they get on the train, and this guy, these two guys in the train carriage went, there you go, this guy must uh, get to Northern Ireland alive and his briefcase dry. Uh, thank you very much. Doesn't matter if it's Northern Ireland, Scotland, Isle of Man, England, Wales, or even the Republic of Ireland, but he must not die and he must not get wet. Do you understand, Boson? And my grandfather says, no problem. So you know, He wasn't a gremlin. He wasn't one of them me. Wiggly, if you get him wet, he no, could no. Right going this, ahead. Ha this happened several times during the war. And one night, the captain says, you've got to meet that guy off the, the train again tonight. And the captain says, who is he anyway? Captain didn't know who he was. My grandfather didn't know who he was. It's only after the war when my grandfather opened the newspaper and there was a picture of Fleming with the penicillin spores. Yeah. As he says, Jesus Christ, that's who it was. Yeah. He never never knew who he was. The guy never said who he was. Yeah. Pleasant enough, but uh, it's, 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 it basically the instructions were, doesn't matter what happens, this guy's yeah, not going to get wet. Well, put, put it like this, you think about it, the distilleries, it was the distilleries, the, the scientists and the people who produced at the, at the distilleries who went to the US government and said, we can do this, we can make this for you. And think of it, I mean, think of the, just the amount of lives that they saved just by, by doing that. I mean, it, credit where it's due, the huge impact in the war, uh, Don't it's never really named as part of a war effort. Well, once again, whiskey saves the day. You know, <laughs> I know that. There you, you, there you go. And you know, if prohibition had continued, they might not have. See, this is it. I mean, in, in some ways, they were lucky enough. <laughs> you know, but you I, th I thought it was a really interesting little bit of of sort of whiskey history that uh, these guys uh, stepped up to the mark when they were needed. Excellent stuff. What's on the the menu next week? Um, don't know yet. But if there's a, there is a, t a tasting coming up, and if people who are uh, 
on hit the subscribe button on YouTube. We're going to get a tasting. Next Friday night, I'm doing a tasting in the Go Sun in Ballymena. I know some of the guys that watch this are coming down. Sold um, out, sold out. Uh, yeah. Sold out, sold out. Yeah. So it'll be a good, a good bit of crack down at that. So yeah, we've got some other stuff coming up. So make, make sure you hit subscribe and you can influence us by buying us a coffee at, at Irish Whiskey. Buy, buy me a coffee at Irish yeah, Whiskey. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm lining up a couple of tastings. A couple of tastings. There is there's a couple of good tastings coming and, up. For anyone who's not what... sure. Well, um, I can't. I don't want to say because um, I don't want to put pressure on anybody. But there's a, It'll be oversubscribed. Yeah. What, what we do is we get a couple of, we get the, the usual, we'll send out, uh, get couple of wee tasting packs sent out, a couple of samples sent out, and people would enjoy them while we're on the show. Okay, excellent stuff. Same time, same place, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Telegram, Twitch, soon to be Instagram, and Tiki Talk, Chinese government. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, ni hao. Ni hao, son. <laughs> Catch you very soon. Uh, good night. Thanks for watching, all right?